Live. Good evening, and how are you all? Long time no see. I'm Ahura Z, and I'd like to welcome you to Holy Soul with Ahura Z. Yeah. <laughs> how you guys doing? <laughs> I'm just goofing off. I'm Ahura Z, and you already know that, but... What you don't know is that tonight I'm going to give you a sausage recipe using beef or ground beef, okay? For those of you that like sausage but can't have sausage because of the immense amount of salt that they put in it, these sausages will be no salt added at all, okay? Like everything else that I, that I cook and show you how to cook, it's all as salt-free as it possibly can get, um, I, which brings up another point. Uh, there are lots of people that watch the show, and I'm, I'm very glad, I'm glad that you're supporting us, but here's one thing you need to understand. I did this show for myself and for people that are on low sodium and extreme low sodium diets. For those of you that like to eat normal and those of you that, that can't eat normal, excuse me, you must understand, you must understand that there are people that are on dietary restrictions. And one of those dietary restrictions is salt. It can severely hurt a, a number of people. So I cook with no salt. In my bakery, no salt. Do you understand that? Okay, and it won't be changed. I'm not going to change it for anyone. I'm not going to put a special request. Can I have salt in it? Absolutely not. Okay, because this is my standard. So understand, a woman uh, commented and said that uh, well, salt is good in moderation, and that uh, everyone can use a little salt, and I, this is true, you have to have salt in your diet. However, there are people that cannot use salt in moderation. There are people that can have hardly any salt or face severe consequences. Those are the people that I'm cooking for. You notice it says hold the salt with a hurazi, not use some salt with a hurazi. My bakery is called Daily Bread Low Sodium Bakery. Okay? I do not add salt to any of my baked goods. Yes, it may taste like I do, but I do not. Okay? And that's something that needs to be understand, understood. Um, also, I do my best because I know that there are people that like to be able to eat things that everyone else eats. And there's a way to do that with no salt added if you use the right types of seasonings. And I've done this for a long time. I do not use salt myself. And the person also said, well, you use salt. And no, I don't. Not at all. Not even a little bit. Okay? Now, there's uh, my wife and my family members who are not on low-sodium diets. I am. And that's a long story, but I am. Maybe not as severe as most, but I look at it this way. If you can have 2,000 milligrams of sodium per day, you can do lower than that, okay? And that can work. And for those people that can only have like 500 milligrams of sodium a day, this is exactly for them, okay? Like today, we're going to be making sausages, okay? Well, my version of sausages, which is no salt added. All of the seasons, uh, seasonings are there, and uh, I will run you through everything. And we're going to use ground beef. Uh, you can use any kind of meat that you'd like. You can use uh, pork. You can use turkey, ground turkey. You can use, if you're that type of person, you can have ground fish if you'd like. Okay. I don't know how exactly. I haven't done the fish part, so I don't know exactly how that might taste. But I'm pretty sure it could be interesting. <laughs> so, uh, one of the things that we, and I, anyway, I just wanted to make that clear, okay, for any of you that will wonder, well, why doesn't he use salt? <clears throat> I'm here to serve those people that cannot eat normally, that, that don't have a choice. And when I was on a low-sodium diet, I went, as I said, I went through every, every way possible to find food that had no salt in it. It was... It was pretty much impossible, you know, and uh, at some point in time, I'm sure that uh, those powers that be will 
make it so that restaurants and things don't add salt to their food. If someone wants salt, put a salt shaker on their table. Let them do it themselves. Okay? But uh, for those that cannot have salt, I am here. Okay? I will teach you recipes and things daily, or the times that you see me on the, the show, that have no salt added but can taste great and normal. Okay? So that being said, uh, one of the things that I do in making the sausage is I use several types of seasonings, which you will observe, you'll see, as you can see, those are my little seasoning thing that I have there, and that is fennel, that is paprika, oh boy, that is paprika, that is red uh, pepper flakes, um, that is also coriander, and um, sage, and some allspice. Now, one thing you will notice is I don't put any sugar in it either. But uh, for those of you that can have sugar, and you know, I can have sugar, but my waist doesn't really need sugar, so to say, uh, you will have that. Now, it's an interesting thing here. As you can see, it's pretty simple. Ground beef, seasonings. Ground beef, seasonings. Okay, you got that? Yes. Good. Charlene Basio says, good evening from Northwest Las Vegas. Good to Yay. see you both. Aloha. Well, good evening there. Aloha, Las Vegas. Las Vegas. <laughs> We're in Maine. <laughs> good to see you too. Aloha. Um, before I get to that part, though, I just want to go over everything. Uh, I also use oregano and some basil and onion, powdered onion. Gives it a nice bite. The conjunction of all of the different spices uh, will give it a wonderful flavor. And I'd have you smell it right now, but you're not here. Um, and have have you smell it too, it might make her sneeze. I will most definitely sneeze. So, <laughs> and then I won't stop sneezing. Yeah. I don't know if you were, if any of you that know Kazi and myself, you've been around this when Kazi has a, a sneeze fit. She can do like rapid fire sneezes, like 10 at a time. <laughs> Kind of sounds like a fair sneezing. You know, so uh, one thing that you can't be afraid of doing is getting your hands in what you're cooking. Um, the ground beef has to be broken up. See, that's what I'm doing at the moment. We're getting uh, shout outs. Hello from Kentucky. Hey. From Paula, Paula Poma. Hello. Rebecca Flores. Says, shout out from Wyoming. What's hey, up, guys? Hey, Wyoming. Wyoming. You know, I used to live in Utah and uh, had to go in and out of Wyoming a lot. Beautiful place to me, it is. It's gorgeous. So, good to hear from you. Thank you for watching and supporting us. Okay. Now, one of the things that you kind of want to steer, steer away from is packing you know, your ground beef um, until you get your seasonings in. Another thing you want to stay away from is pouring everything in at once. Just like dump it in and hope that it turns out all right. So my suggestion for you is take a little bit of your seasonings. And for those that may have missed it uh, earlier, I'll tell you what your seasonings are here. You have fennel, you have coriander, you have sage, you have oregano, some extra basil, onion, allspice, red pepper flakes, and sage. I might have missed something there, but I'm sure I remember it. Um, and you want to make sure that it gets kind of squeezed all the way through. Okay, you want that nice flavor there. Try not to overdo it with the seasonings. Um, I've noticed with a lot of people that, um, the few people that I know that uh, cook with no salt, they overdo it on your seasonings. And uh, that's never good. It makes it, if you put too much of your seasonings in anything, it will make it not taste right. It'll make it bitter, almost. No. But take your time. <clears throat> you know, talk to your neighbors. You know, talk to people, find out how they're doing. 
You should hug your mama nymphs. <laughs> Louis Tilly says, hello from uh, Cumming, Georgia. Oh, Georgia, cool. Had to go through Georgia a long time ago. <laughs> Everybody thought he was a wrestler. No, I'm not talking about that. Oh. I was talking about earlier. Um, but, uh, yeah, they did think I was a wrestler. They always think that. Had the whole airport believing that I was a WWE wrestler. So me and Kazi tried to make a hasty retreat and, you know, try to dissuade them, but they weren't having it. <laughs> okay, yeah, that looks good. Can I come look? Mm -hmm. Trying to yeah, see. Hold on. I just okay. have a second. That looks good. How are you people all doing, huh? Oh, yeah. Don't forget your paprika, please. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Now, sometimes a tiny bit of bitterness can help. Not too much. That's where your mustard seed comes in. Okay, just a little bit. Don't don't put too much in it. Okay. You won't really notice anything at first until you actually go through the cooking process, but you will notice. Okay. And this is something that is really very, very easy. Um, later on, once you get everything added, you can go through kind of blend it in even more. As you can see, here, yeah. you can see it's getting you know, through there. All the seasonings are kind of getting in there. Okay, and that's what I want. I don't want them to be surface. I just don't, I don't want them clumpy, um, so you might take those into consideration that if you don't blend it well, you get a mouthful of herbs and a mouthful of everything else and no sausage, and that's not what you want. So, while I'm doing this, how are you all? Hmm? How are you really? I know that people have had interesting weeks. Mercury messes with people a lot, <laughs> a whole lot, and then people are, are just finding out that they can go outdoors and do things, and it's, you know, the whole pandemic thing has affected people quite a lot. You know, I've known people that have had mental crises, and uh, people that have had emotional crises and things that, because they were shut down for so long. And then when they tr finally tried to go out and socialize, it just did not work, you know. So, how are you guys doing? You guys okay? You ready to go out and face society again? I will say this about things, though. It has, whatever has been happening has caused employers, at least here in Maine, uh, employers to kind of understand that without employees you don't really have a business so they're offering a lot you know you know they're practically begging people to get jobs you know to go get a job go to work you know we're here uh, we'll hire you to say in fact there was one place was it Home Depot? Home Depot was doing walk-in hiring yeah so like who walked right in uh, hired we get a job. <laughs> okay you're hired <laughs> You know, so uh, for those yep. of you that may be looking for a job, check your Home Depots, your Lowe's, your, you know, things like that where they need good employees. Walgreens and, is hiring. You know, Cook. a lot of the restaurants are hiring. And, uh, you know, that's understandable because they've gone so long, locked down, so now all of a sudden they uh, are dealing with this volume that they were not dealing with before. And also people are on unemployment mm -hmm. and making more money on unemployment. But you got to understand, that's not what it's for. 
unemployment, unemployment is for those of people that actually need it, and not people who are just not willing to work. You know, you've got to go get yourself a job. You've got to do something. You know, so go get a job. They're paying better. Okay. Uh, $15 minimum wage, and some people are paying even more, you know, just to have people come and work for them. There's, in other words, there's no reason that someone would look and say, well, there's no jobs, because that's not, it's, it's not true. Um, but if you need time to get yourself acclimated again, then do that. Listen, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm saying that you should. But remember, if you're willing to work, they're willing to pay. Rebe okay. Rebecca Flores says she's doing good here. Good. Still hesitant about being around a lot of people. I understand. Some of our restaurants have shortened hours for lack of staff. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's what yep. I'm saying. You know, so it's affected people perhaps a little differently than people might have expected. To those people that have been very affected, the prayers are with you. Try to see through things. It's very helpful. Okay. And if you need help, need somebody to talk to, part of my job is what I do. Talk to people, help them through. This is an opportunity for me to explain paranormality to people. People think that a paranormal coach or a paranormal investigator is just someone that goes out and looks for ghosts, and unfortunately that's what television has made you think, and it's be further from the truth. That's not all it is. To deal with the paranormal is to deal with anything that is not normal okay, or beyond normal. That means when people have a crisis in their life, a lot of times, uh, even those people that help other people like therapists, they come see me or someone like myself because we deal in those things. I can tell the difference between someone's normal state of being and whether or not there has been either an apparition or an aberration in their life, you know, and that's what I deal with and specialize in. So if you need someone that you absolutely have to talk to, don't give up. There are a lot of people like me out there that can help you, and a lot of them deal with the paranormal. It's not so much to get you to a state of normalcy, it's to get you to a state of operationalism, where you can cope and you can think, okay, to let you know that there's always hope, no matter what it looks like. Okay. So, um, for those of you that can't find me other ways, you can also uh, find me on the Daily Bread Bakery site, which is www.dailybreadlowsodium.com. Okay. Now, as you can see, we mixed our things in. And what we have there is a nice meatball. <laughs> it smells good. It smells really good. What do you think? Smells like sausage. Yep. It's really, really good. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep my stove thing over here. Uh, just started with a little heat. I don't want to overdo anything. So, uh, I mentioned last time also that I was going to give you a fried chicken recipe. And I'll do that on our next show. Uh, I apologize for not having to in the last couple of weeks, but I've had some things to deal with, which is what I was just talking to you, someone that just could not cope with things, and I had to help them. Um, yeah, them all sizes. Now, you have to deal with how you want your sausages to be, okay? You can make them into little links or little patties, that's up to you. Or you can make them look like, you know, the big giant sausages. I don't have any sausage skins, and quite honestly, I probably wouldn't use them anyway. <laughs> but what I do have is my two hands. I do things big. Guys would probably tell me if it's too big. Charlene says. Yes, anxiety during pandemic, feeling good and praying for everyone, continuing to stay safe and staying in due to our high temperatures. Earlier, it was 114 degrees. Holy mother. Wow. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. 
Same issue here in Las Vegas. Some people prefer to collect unemployment. Yes, wants to see you cook fried chicken. Sir, I'll definitely do that for you. And at some point, I'm going to start with the desserts. You guys will like my desserts. <laughs> I'm good at this. I've been... Uh, you see, I make a pass, uh, a oh. uh, patty sausage. Yeah, you can kind of see that. What are you doing? Checking the thickness. <laughs> showing them the thickness. <laughs> okay, so that's about a quarter of an inch thick. Maybe a little, maybe almost a half an inch. That's almost half an inch. Joanne, Joanne says, I love your desserts. <laughs> you should try his apple fritter. I've been trying to get him to bake it now for a couple of months, and he just won't do it. I'll do it at some point, just like I'll make the other things. You know, when I'm ready. That's dad talk for, nah. That's not true at all. how to make some of my bread too. Uh, I don't know, a lot of them says, how do you make your bread? Can I have your recipes? And I said, no. <laughs> but I will show you from time to time how to make it. I worked hard for those recipes. I mean, I'm going to go up to Colonel Sanders and ask him for his seven herbs and spices. They're not perfect patties, but they'll do. <laughs> there we go. That should heat up real nice at some point. Now you can do this. It's really easy. I'm coming over, zooming in. Just cause you zoom in with you really walking. Ta da! Looks great. Yep. Now, for those of you that uh, I know that sausages are have been thought of as a breakfast food, and that's that's fine. Um, you can have them anytime. So, and uh, you know. You, if you're going to use uh, something with them, maybe to add a little sweetness, uh, my suggestion is to use actual maple syrup, not the maple flavored syrup, you know, the real stuff. Uh, and fortunately, I'm in the place in the United States where actual maple syrup comes from. It's the best, I'll put it that way. That's, that would be me. Or you can use honey, just a little bit, not too much. You don't want to try to hide the flavor of anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, I purposefully, purposefully uh, chose a ground beef that had a little more fat on it. You know, just for not only the flavor, but to kind of see things inside. You can use low fat, extremely low fat if you like, and uh, that will work as well. But I just did it this way. And if there's something that you would like to uh, taste in your sausages, that is your choice. You use what you like. Okay? But at least give the low sodium way or no sodium way you eat this way after a time, you know, it was very interesting because what happened is I looked at eating as a penalty because I didn't have any salt to anything and it, 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 I noticed the, the taste difference. But after a while, it was as if my taste buds woke up and I really didn't see the difference. In fact, it taught me that I was eating way, way too much salt. Okay because I could smell the salt in the air, or I could 
taste the difference. And pretty soon it was, my taste buds woke up, I could taste things much better, and I had no craving for salt at all. Now I look at it this way. Well, we eat salt almost like an addiction. We get addicted to certain things and feel like we always have to have it. But I looked at my signing off salt like I did when I quit smoking. This is a little different in the way that I was kind of forced to, but when I quit smoking, like 15 years ago, um, I made myself do it. No, I did not use any guns or nicotine patches or anything like that. I made myself do it. <laughs> First thing I did was apologize to my family at the time. <laughs> I told them that, listen, I just quit smoking, which means for the next three, four, three weeks or so, I'm going to be a prime USDA jerk. <laughs> and I said, so forgive me. I cannot be held responsible for things I might say as I am delirious. And then I completed that and kept going without any of those days, you know? I had cravings for maybe three days. And after that, never again. And that is the absolute truth. Never again. I had no more cravings. And I believe that's the same thing that happened with salt. I didn't want it. I didn't feel bad anymore. I said, fine. This is me now. Rebecca Flores says, yes, you can actually taste the food. Yes, yes. And you know, for those that are just starting, uh, Rebecca, it's very difficult to get them to understand that your taste buds will recover and they'll be better than ever. Because no one likes to feel as though they're losing out something on something, you know, missing out on something. And for a while, that's exactly how I felt, like I was missing out on salt. Come over here. As you can see, these are my sausage patties. Okay. They're cooking just wonderfully. Isn't that lovely? Now, I like things well done. Um, you can have them however you'd like, but give them a chance to cook, okay? If you give them a chance to cook, you will be rewarded with real good taste. Now, for those of you that uh, need, when I put in the sausages listed, uh, I will make it so that you'll be able to see. Uh, just check us out again at www.dailybreadlowsodium.com Okay? Also, if any of you want to make a donation to help further what we do, uh, like I said, I have plans to open a low sodium restaurant. So that I can serve more people. So the people don't get left out. You know, one of the things that I found that is if you don't provide people a way to eat this way, is that they get there's something on the inside of them that will pressure them to say things like, Well, I can have this, I can have some some of this, or I can have some of that, or it's okay, I can have some salt, all I have to do is maybe take my uh, water pill or something like that. But it's far better. If we start working on a place where we can all eat, and all of you and all of my, and myself can eat without feeling that our next meal could harm us. So, that's what I'm going to do. And hopefully, a lot of other people will start doing that too. Okay. I'm going to find another plate now. Yes, please. Charlene says, good for you for quitting your bad habits. 
Yes, those patties look ono and definitely well done. I can imagine the smell in your kitchen. Oh, great. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. First order up. Mm. And that is how you make low sodium sausage. Remember, you can do this. Okay? And I promise I'll do my best for you. You're safe with me. Thank you all for joining me tonight. I do hope to see you again next week. And we will be working on fried chicken. Battered and everything. Okay? Until then, stay low sodium. Stay good. And if you ever need someone to talk to because you're in a crisis, look us up. Okay? I'm also on Facebook. You can just hit me up. Okay? All right, I'm a Hurzi. I'll hold the salt with a Hurzi. Thank you all for coming. Good night. Hi, Maricela. Good night.